and welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have Adam Jordan. Hello. Tom Webster. Hey, everyone. And myself, Eric Fine. Oof, how are you guys doing this week? Let's get this fucking year over with. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah. I'm Holy happy. Fuck. Well, that's it's not happy. Month. Guys, guys, we've got, we've got like less than 30 hours left before 2016 is gone for good. Holy shit. Hopefully no one else dies. Don't say it. <laughs> there went Gabe. Uh, Gabe's gone. God damn it. Uh, Herc, okay, if Gabe dies sometime in the next 30 hours, I'm blaming you. And our podcast get a, will get famous. So I know. might also end up getting arrested at that point. But <laughs> And I'm just going to say it. Fuck holiday travel. This is my oh, first year. I can year. only imagine. This is my yeah. first year ever had to deal with it. Going across the country to come home for Christmas. Um, yeah, let's just say it was not fun. Uh, <laughs> just got back in today. Um, local time right now at 7 p.m. Local time, I woke up at 1 a.m. Uh, still <laughs> rolling. So, so going strong. But yeah, um, it's been fun. Though, didn't get stopped in Detroit this time, so all good. That's always a good yeah, thing. We were worried. <laughs> we're like, he's not going to make another trip to Detroit. It's just not yeah. Gonna happen. No. I, I like what the one guy said. Where you know, I open up my eyes, slept on the plane, realize it took me to Detroit, and not Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Ah, uh, so have you guys been able to do any any gaming at all? I know everyone's been uh, a little busy. Yeah. Yes. Like I wouldn't do any gaming. I actually I played a lot. Week. <laughs> yeah. I got a whole lot done on my gaming to do list, but I've been on vacation for this whole week. So Yeah, same. I, I was, but yeah. So Adam, <laughs> what yes. have you been doing? I played some Rocket League. Josh, our my teammate, we got him to Grand Champion. So that was exciting. Nice. Very cool. And I played the Stanley Parable, which I bought on sale for like three dollars. Um, I didn't... love the Stanley Parable. I know you do, and I don't, but <laughs> I, I can see the appeal. I can absolutely see the appeal, and it was amusing. It was kind of interesting. It just didn't capture me like a lot of other people seem to uh, think. But it was it was cool. It was entertaining. I love the. I love the the breaking of the fourth wall, the the odd I've, changes of scenery that happens when you don't do what you're supposed to do. I've well, never why, played why Stanley. Didn't you like it? I don't. I don't know. It, it was just like, okay, um, you don't do what the guy says. He's going to berate you a little bit for it, and then oh no, and then he's going to say something sarcastic, and then you're going to not do it again, and then he's going to berate you for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like it. You see, I, I went through every ending of the Stanley Parable probably mm-hmm. twice, and then yeah. I went achievement hunting. I, I didn't get the achievement for play for the entire duration of a Thursday, just because I thought that was a little bit too ridiculous for me. And yes, that is an achievement. You have to play for the entire duration of a Thursday. So you Jesus. just start the, so game just leave the game and you leave it run. Yeah. Yes, it's, and you get the achievement. It's your moral win trick. Get your athletics up by duct taping a controller walking forward into a wall. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's also, uh, I, I wanted you to go achievement hunting a little bit and do this because it's still entertaining. There's an achievement uh-huh. for going into the options, and there's an option called achievement that you turn on, and you get the achievement for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. See, that's funny. See, all that stuff I like a lot. Uh, maybe maybe I was just tired when I played it, or I, I say, but I like, I, shot. I thought it was kind of interesting, but I wasn't enamored with it like a lot of people seem to be. I've never played it. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Yeah. Um, generally, though, I love the fourth wall breaking. Yeah. In I cartoons, too. I absolutely love it. In movies, I think it's hilarious as long as it's done tastefully. Mm. As long as, it, and also as long as it's not the gimmick of the entire game, unless yeah. the game yeah. does some weird meta thing well, where it's trying to get out of a game kind of thing. I think that's kind of what the Stanley Parable does, and maybe that's why I didn't like it as much. Yeah, that's really the whole like point. Whole yeah. Yeah. 
It, it makes fun of video games, is really the entire point behind the Stanley Parable. Some people have taken it a little farther and made an entire philosophy around the Stanley Parable. I don't subscribe to that. I just think it's a chuckle-funny game. Not everything yeah. has to be written like a Bible. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, there's a point in the Stanley Parable where if you sort of disobey the guy, but sort of not, eventually, uh, because it does save state between playthroughs, he does... The, the narrator will keep track of what you've done and what you haven't done. Uh, mm. And there's a, an element of randomness. So sometimes you'll end up in a completely different part of the office. Sometimes you'll end up in a completely different game. Um, but with uh, sometimes you'll end up launching into the adventure line, where he's literally painted a yellow line on the floor that you have to follow, and that's your adventure. <laughs> you know, like most adventure games, you have to follow your, your objective line to each point, and yeah, we're having fun now, right, guys? We're having a good time. That's something that turned me <laughs> off of the recent RPGs, is everything tells you exactly where you need to go. You don't read oh, it anymore. Yeah. You just spam A, get the motherfucker to shut up, and you run to the waypoint. Yep. That's yeah. all anyone does anymore. Sorry, old man side just came out. <laughs> well, I, I'm actually going to play off that during my turn. But mm-hmm. So, Stanley Parable, you didn't really like it. Duh. Well, I don't even want to say I didn't really like it. You didn't like it as much kinda, as you thought. I didn't like it as much as I thought, but I'm going to give it another shot. So, so I played some of that. So um, what's I this played full hmm? anti-birth. Binding the binding of Isaac anti-birth. Oh. The community made mod that is really good. It's so well done. I am impressed by this. Um. So apparently it's been in development for like two years. So they like Rebirth must have launched and they were like, all right, we're immediately going to start making this big ass mod for this. Um, It's really good, though. It actually feels it looks and feels like it was made by the developers. It's not janky. The visuals aren't out of place. All the stylists, the the stylistic elements of it are completely the Binding of Isaac. Um, A whole lot of new enemies. Uh, variations of enemies. Uh, there's like an entire alternate path you can take through the floors with different floors, new floors. A hmm. uh, whole bunch of new bosses, a uh, new end boss, a uh, bunch of items. Do but the, it all fits. Do the items have synergies within them like the old ones did? Um, I haven't got... I haven't... Um, I haven't played it enough to unlock or see most of the stuff yet. But yes, I mean, there are still some synergies and um, there's even new music that you can toggle on or off. Nice. Um, that sounds, you know, good. It's really good. It sounds like it's part of the game. Um, um, you said it's having um, a lot of fun with it, though. The only thing that it's it's a rebirth mod. It's not an afterbirth mod. So the the it's not compatible with the expansion that was art that's already been out for a while. So items that got like debuffed or buffed or changed for the afterbirth expansion, those do not apply to this. Um. So how did you go about installing the mod? Since this is not part of, it's currently not on Workshop. Did you have to do something weird, or how did the mod get installed? I had to uninstall afterbirth, and I had to run an exe. <laughs> okay um, and then i had to really and then i had to yeah and then then i set up in steam i set up a link to the new exe That's you basically you, you uh, run the installer and then you tell it where your binding of isaac installation is and then you tell it where you want it to install and then it installs it and then you run it so as long as you're comfortable now, with the uh, windows file system browser or whatever file yeah. system browser you use you're good yeah, or are you, you know able to, to easily extract that? Like, if you wanted to get rid of the anti-birth mod, can you easily get that out of your Isaac installation? Yes. It's okay. just a separate folder within the Isaac installation that says oh. anti-birth. Oh, well, nice. Hell, that's easy. This yeah, wonderful. It's, it's not like replacing so-and-so.dll in the main directory okay. and go to this folder and replace <laughs> Isaac. I have played, yeah, I've played no, I've far too that many more. Yeah. Do <laughs> I've done that get, before. It's none of that. Yeah, Dude, to get rid of it, you got to blow up the whole folder and reinstall the whole damn thing. If I have yeah. to mess with DLLs <laughs> and registries or anything like that, fuck that. It's too easy to make a bad keystroke. 
yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's none of that. It's super easy to install. Um, if you're bored of The Binding of Isaac or you've played it a lot and you're kind of burnt out, definitely install this and give it another go. It, it kind of reignites uh, that discovery of new things that was so appealing to The Binding of Isaac. So it's, it's really, really well done. And didn't you say that uh, McMullen uh, actually pretty much did a shout out to the community that made it and that he said about expanding on it or something? Yeah, he did make a post on Twitter saying that he definitely would like to make that a part of the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth, after the Afterbirth Plus comes out. So he does plan on making it part of the game. You know you're doing something right as a mod? when the main game dev is saying, yeah, we want to bring that in. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say actually the opposite. You know, you're doing something right as a, as a game dev when you want to bring a mod into your game. Mm-hmm. And you say, hey, this is rad as fuck. We should just, you know, build this in because these guys have yeah. such great ideas. You know, I, I want to give a huge shout out to, you know, the team behind Super Meat Boy, Binding of Isaac, because... They're just great people, and it looks like they're they're running their community and running their games exactly how they should be. Yeah, they're it's really a win win for both sides. Yeah, I like that they don't churn out a lot of games, but what they do, it's very good game. It'll get you going for about eh, six months or so of heavy game play, and then you'll get that little bit of a shoot in the arm when you got that DLC coming in. Yeah, which I will always <laughs> buy. It doesn't matter yeah. what the fuck it is. It's just one more item for Binding of Isaac. I will probably buy it. Yeah, I, we, we spend a lot of time on this podcast complaining about shitty developers, but you know <laughs> these, these guys are the exact opposite. They're what all developers should aspire to be. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's a good standard of there is a way to have paid DLC that the customers feel satisfied buying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's not it's not horse armor. These are full expansion packs that fundamentally <laughs> change your games, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I actually I read something. I'll, I'll get into that later if we if we bring up DLC again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um. So I played that. I probably played like five or five or six runs of that. Um. I played Overcooked, which we all played. So, can we go ahead and just talk about that now? Yes, yes, yes we should talk all so, about Overcooked. <laughs> my first experience when I when I looked at that game, I'm like, oh, it looks like a kind of looks like a what I would perceive as a Wii game. Like, yeah, this is probably kind of cool with some friends and there's probably not a lot to it. And I probably will think it's mediocre. But I did not think it was mediocre. I actually had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> It's very stressful. Um, like he said, what seems very easy at first, you start to realize there's a lot of strategy involved and you'll start realizing you're shouting at your friends right next to you to do something <laughs> and they think you're so someone let me, else. Let me put this um, into perspective for people who don't know what Overcooked is. If you buy a computer or you know on a rig right now, go and look it up immediately because it's just a shit ton of fun. So if you're driving in your car listening to this podcast or can't get to a computer, Overcooked is a game where you and up to three of your friends, so a total of four people, uh, will be short order. Uh, essentially, I don't want to call them fry cooks, but short order chefs. Um, and there are these little stations, like there's a station where you can grab some tomatoes and a station where you can grab some meat. And then you go over to a cutting board and you chop it up and put it on a bun and make sure you cook your meat and then put it on a burger and ship it. And if you ship it early enough, uh, you get a nice tip. Uh, but the and that sounds really easy. And it is when your kitchen is laid out properly. <laughs> if it's not or if your kitchen is haunted and your ingredients keep floating away, it becomes a an outstanding challenge to try to keep everything. You know, from catching on fire, literally. Uh, so, if your kitchen is split between two trucks that kind of <laughs> almost miss each other in the highway, but sometimes they line up and, you know, you can fall off the trucks and die and wait 10 seconds to respawn. Like, it gets absolutely insane. It's the epitome of, let's take a simple concept for a game and take it to the nth degree. Yeah, I've actually heard this broke down really well, and I love the analogy. Think of a Mario Party mini game. And it was turned into a full-fledged game. The wacky kind of shit you would think of in a Mario Party game, like a rat comes out of the drawer and eats your ingredients, is the kind of stuff that happens here. Yeah. 
but it's actually got a really good um like strategic kind of thing to it yeah you will have uh war room debates before you start a round when you're trying to get your three star <laughs> runs so basically you you go through these different worlds and things get gradually more and more complicated so the way things are laid out a lot of the times you have to work together with the people you're playing with um you have to coordinate with all four of you so it gets to a point where if you're not all coordinating you're not going to get everything done in time it i, I think it kind of it kind of this uh, is... puts off that spirit of actually working in a kitchen. Yeah, it really does. Like this is one <laughs> game where you know electing a manager out of your group of friends to call all the shots isn't like totally a dick move. If you want to say, okay, yeah. you, Bill, you're going to stand in the corner. It, it, it was really Tom. Tom, you keep knocking us off the damn ice platform, and we keep losing because of you. You're going to sit in the corner <laughs> by the fry chef area, and you're going to cook these ingredients and get them out the door while telling us what to do. And it. Yeah. It works really well. Um, does it have an online component? Because we were playing in person on the same screen, which, I mean, I never thought I would say this, but like multiplayer on the same screen, I really missed that. That's that was great. a lot of fun. Yeah. It was it was a great flashback. Really enjoyed it. Um, next week, I'll be able to tell you for 100% certainty. We'll just touch it a little bit. I plan on trying to do some online with it because we were really damn close to beating it. And I know one other person that has it, so I want to try the online. Oh, nice. But, yes, it's supposedly, <laughs> and it also has a, compet- or a competitive mode, important call out. Oh. Yeah, we didn't even touch that. Oh, yeah. We were too busy working together, and uh, I know Irk will appreciate this, and it's one of the reasons I liked it so much, is because I love efficiency. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing something and figuring out the best way to do that in the least amount of time in the most coordinated way. And this game is all that. There's a beautiful Although- moment in one of these <laughs> levels where it's just sheer chaos. No one's saying that you do this, you do that. And all of a sudden you realize everyone is doing the systematic thing without verbalizing it. And you have this machine <laughs> that's just running non verbally. And it's just mm-hmm. beautiful. Until yeah. you get to that one fucking ice level where, you know, up until this time, you've had a really nice system in place and everything's going really well. And you're getting, you know, three stars, which is a, you know, zero to three star system for how well you did, which is how you unlock other levels. So you can't go on if you're just limping through the game. But you get to this one level and your system completely falls apart because of this one little thing they threw in just to fuck it all up. So you're like, OK. Let's just have complete chaos in this level and hope we get through it. And then you figure out that's the best system for this style of kitchen. <laughs> it really frustrates me because all of your planning and strategy just flew out the window. It's, yeah. it's nice, though. It's a good break. You really have to make a new strategy every different stage. Yeah. And you'll probably end up calling someone the Fry Daddy, which is our Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am Daddy. Fry Daddy. <laughs> but I think they did a good job of, of keeping... Uh, or adding elements in that kept it interesting as you progressed. It wasn't just like more of the same thing, but more of it or less time to do that. It's they actually yeah. add unique elements into each stage that, that put a whole twist on what you're, what you need to do. And the way they divide the world is really interesting. They divide the world based on essentially the item that you're going to be shipping out to the customers is that world when they introduce it. So the first yeah. world is like all soups. And then the second world, I think, was when they brought in hamburgers. Yeah. And they do stuff like that. And it's really nice. It's Then you get to the ice world and they introduce fish. Yes. Fish and chips and frying things. And with the sometimes you'll get new stuff. Like you'll get a stock pot or a frying pan or a mm-hmm. fry basket. Um, and then eventually you'll get to the later levels in the world. And they'll go, okay, you're going to be shipping soup and hamburgers out. So now you've got two completely disparate systems that hardly interact with each other, but sometimes they do. And you have mm-hmm. to try to manage that with however many people you've got. Yeah, and they put uh, it on the opposite sides of the kitchen on a table that you can't walk past. So you have to get your friends to cut up the ingredients you need for your soup, but they can't cook it on their side because they don't have a pot. So they have to take it over to you and you have to cook it. Or it's you, really interesting. <laughs> or you go into yeah. space where you have to have people sending on pressure plates to open up doors so you can get to ingredients and prep. And yeah, it yeah. just it's it's, it's <laughs> basically like if 
if you've seen Iron Chef, imagine if they mixed Iron Chef with like the world's worst design kitchens of all time, and imagine the hilarity that would ensue. Dude, that yeah. would be amazing. Except that would of, be a great TV show. <laughs> instead of professional chefs, they just grab people from the street like, you, sir, you're coming with us. You get to be on a four-person Iron Chef in the world's worst kitchen team. I'm actually kind of envisioning I like an American, <laughs> I'm thinking like American gladiator kind of layout with cooking. Yes. Yeah, I would absolutely watch that. I would oh, watch I would. it. Alton Constantly. Brown, make this happen. Yeah. Alton Brown and then Gordon Ramsay can just walk around yelling at everybody and insulting them. And then storm and I ice bust through this. the walls. <laughs> <laughs> you heard so, it here uh, first. If this becomes a thing, you all owe us money. So, um, <laughs> especially if you've got local people around the holidays, if you've got uh, spare controllers laying around, you don't have to have a controller for each person. You can do split controllers, which we didn't try, but looks really interesting and simultaneously oh, yeah. frustrating. Um, yeah. So get Overcooked. It's on Steam right now. It is How still is on it? sale. It's 11, 11 and change. Oh, that's not bad. That's even it's, better. I th- oh, it's 13 if you get the DLC. It's originally a $15 game pre-sale. Okay. Even at fifteen so, bucks, I think it's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for for, sure. for the night we had, that was absolutely worth how fifteen did, bucks. How long did we play that? We had about eight hours, we were, I think, on it with six of us. So we so we had plans for a, a specific time in the evening. So before that, we're like, oh, we'll all meet up at Tom's place. We'll play some games. Or had overcooked up. So like, yeah, we're playing this. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, what? What time were we supposed to leave for the thing? <laughs> And we're like, oh no, 15 minutes ago, because <laughs> we got so caught up in this game. <laughs> and then we come back. The it's first also thing a- we do is we start the game up again. <laughs> and how, uh, what do we stay up to like 3 a.m. playing yeah, that It happens game? again. <laughs> and uh, someone's like, you guys know what time it is? Like, no, it's like, it's quarter till two. What? <laughs> we have to be And then we played another travel. hour after that. Yeah. Yeah, and I had to be so it's also like- We played, what, like six hours of that game? that day six or eight we played a ton of that game out of yeah out of the nine hours we hung out spectator game because even yeah. if you're not actually playing you get people it's that are like watch you know they're, they're screaming at you because you're burning the soup and <laughs> and then some guys like no no you got a hamburger ship that hamburger that has to get out now you're gonna miss the other thing and mm-hmm. everyone's yelling at each other in the same room but it's <laughs> it's all cooperative until you get to competitive mode which we haven't tried yet so there's still a few facets we need to try out of this game but I think we can 100% say, pick it up. It was a gem. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to be a must buy. Great party game. So, Tom, you yes. have been playing some You played games. some interesting things this you, week, didn't you? You actually fucking marathon something. I yes. did. <laughs> Two days. I'm so, I'm so glad you played it. I was so excited for you to play it. Two days. And uh, I want to say, I forget what my total time was. I think it was less than 30 hours. I'm going to say it was like 25-ish. So it wasn't like huge. Um, But I went through The Last of Us. Uh, Adam let me his PS3 and all the stuff that goes with it uh, so I could play through this gem. And I really enjoyed it. Um, Some of the people I know say it's the best game they've ever played. Uh, There's nothing better. It's amazing. It's the second coming. Uh, (laughs) They kept going on. And it's really good. (laughs) It's yeah. really good. It is not the greatest game of all time, and I, I think it's really good. I don't know if I would play through it a second time, personally. It's worth it on a harder difficulty, because the, har- the yeah. top difficulty literally turns it into a horror game. Yeah. yeah, And, and I can definitely see that. I did like, though... Uh, so, okay, the, for those of you who don't know, The Last of Us is probably one of the biggest games to come out of Naughty Dog since, what, Ah, uh, well, Uncharted, Uncharted. Series. the first Uncharted, or maybe yeah. Crash Bandicoot like, one. <laughs> like this is something we're like, yeah. Like, Please hey guys, here's a, a new series. We we think it's yeah. going to be good. We think it's going to be a big hit, and it was you know one of the most well received games uh, of the year. Uh, they re released it a couple times now, um, so you can pick it up on newer platforms if you haven't tried it out. Uh, it's sort of a survival game but i don't i hate saying it's sort of a survival game because everything becomes you know minecraft with guns or oh let's just throw a crafting system at it and yeah it, it'll it'll be great or it becomes ark or rust or you know name one of these stupid games that keep imitating each other <laughs> it's nothing like that you actually give a shit about what you're doing and you give a shit about the characters 
Uh, not in a Walking Dead style. I had more of an emotional connection with the characters in that game than uh, the characters in this one. Not to say I didn't care. Mm, really? I did. I did, yes. The Walking Dead was more emotionally impactful for me. Might Man. be because I was marathoning it, but Man, it I'm was. T- I played it over about three day span. I'm telling you what, man, I felt for Ellie. And like Joel, I felt that tear at the end. I'm not going to yeah. say it because <laughs> we, we didn't preface this, but that tear, I, I feel that. I, I mean, I was there. Yeah. I, I'm not saying it wasn't impactful. It was, but The Last of Us did not make me break down over some of the horrible <laughs> shit I saw, like in The Walking yeah. Dead. Um, it's, it's really good. Um, and it's one of the few, uh, again, I say this and it's got such a negative connotation <laughs> now, but it's, it's one of the few zombie games that actually fucking gets it right. Yeah. The zombies are fine. The zombies you don't have to worry about, right? Bar the doors. Who gives a fuck? They're going to moan on the other side, whatever. Um, oh no, there's zombies that'll hear you, but they can't see anything. Okay. We're going to sneak past, they slow them. That's not really that terrifying. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. annoying, especially if you're trapped in a basement with them, but it's not the end of the world. Bandits? Someone wants to come and get your shit? Okay, now it's the That's end of the real. world. Yeah. It's, it, it really it fucking gets it. And in The Walking Dead, the TV show, I actually touched on this later uh, in the series, later than I would have wanted it to, where <laughs> the zombies became kind of a set piece. They weren't really the threat. Right. They were just like yeah. that. You know, there's a persistent evil in the world, and they're called zombies. The it's constant the bandits. annoyance to keep you in check. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's the bandits. The zombies are there to make sure you don't get completely lazy. The bandits are there to make sure you're on your fucking A game. And The Last of Us really puts that into perspective. Uh, It's, you know, part action, part horror, part stealth game. Very cinematic. Very cinematic. It's it's very, it's so story focused. But it's one of those games that I've never played a game that was that story focused that the gameplay was also that good to play. Yes. Like you normally have these games where it's got great gameplay and there's a cool story that kind of tags along with it. Or you've got these games with an excellent story like The Walking Dead where the gameplay is kind of an afterthought. It's something to get you through the story. This was very much it felt half and half for me. I had a whole lot of fun just playing the game. The gunplay was was interesting. Um, I played it on the hard difficulty, so I was always scrounging for bullets and supplies. I had to think about every shot I took because I was so low on ammo the entire time. I um, played it through on the normal and then went to the hardest mm-hmm. difficulty where yeah. you don't know where things are. This yeah, I didn't game, do that one. <laughs> this game has a listening mode where you can see where things are through walls by quote-unquote hearing them. Mm-hmm. In the hardest mode, that goes away. So when you walk through a door, there could be something right there and you have no clue. So you have a clicker yeah. in your face, like, instantly. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, the gameplay does match up with the story, which is, you know, a badge of honor, uh, especially mm-hmm. recently, because usually, you're right, you do get one or the other. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I did. Uh, there were... The game is beautiful. It's stunningly beautiful, even today. And I was playing it, you know, on an original PS3, uh, and it's still amazing. Frankly, I don't know why... They even bothered with an HD re-release. It was perfectly HD to me. Um, but, you know, I, I get it. They Naughty Dog is printing money with this series, and they absolutely deserve to. Uh, when I got to the crafting system, the first time they said, hey, you can make, uh, you know, health kits or Molotov cocktails, I just, I let out a literal audible <laughs> groan. I was like, oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. This game was, was pretty good, and now they just had to fucking ruin it with a crafting system. Turns out that's actually one of my favorite parts of the game, which is really weird because I fucking hate crafting systems in yeah. most games because yeah. they're thrown in because it's like one of those check boxes, you know? Right. Oh, online Call of Duty style XP based multiplayer. Check. Yep. All right. Crafting <laughs> yeah. system. Check. Really annoying high pitched character. Check. All right. We got them all. We can ship this now. Borderlands 7. Um, hey. But no, I love Borderlands. Well, I really yeah. do. We get uh, it. But, you know, with <laughs> with The Last of Us, it actually gave me more agency over my choices. I actually had to think in the game, saying, mm-hmm. all right, do I need, do I really want to use a Molotov cocktail on these two enemies in front of me? I don't have any health kits. I can either make one of these to help my attack or one of these to, you know, heal myself when I invariably fuck up something. 
Yeah. Well, how do I play? And every <laughs> single crafting component has got this either or balance to it, but there's never enough items to make all of everything that you need at the time. So you really yeah. do have to do some management of that. Really cool. Totally put me into into Joel's shoes. Uh-huh. And health kits aren't, you know, push button use health kit. It takes time. You sit down and you know, bandage yourself up. And when there are enemies around, you don't want to fucking do that because they will find you. Uh, the AI is outstanding. Uh, with yes. the zombieish enemies, you know, they act like zombies, no surprise. But the humans, they will flank you. Uh, if you make a noise, they're not going to do the Metal Gear thing where they're like, oh, I guess it's Ooh, just a noise. box. <laughs> yeah. But, like, they look for 10 seconds and like, oh, it's a box. I'm going to move on with my life and do the same stupid patrol thing I've been doing my entire existence. Yeah. No, these guys will stay on high alert. Yeah. So when you fuck something up or when you kill someone in a loud way, they know and they will keep knowing. Yeah, I uh, like how they, they incorporated the dialogue into that. Like, if you you know encounter one and he starts fighting, he goes, you'll hear the enemy go, hey, he's in here! And then they yeah. all kind of... Or if you're... Uh, this was shown in the trailer before it released. But you can do, like, the holding somebody hostage thing, or you point a gun at them and they stop, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And if you if you shoot at him and you miss and you shoot again and you're out of ammo, he, they'll verbally say, like, oh, you're out of ammo. Now I heard that, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah just, it's really well done. It was really immersive in that way. There's, there's little things. The, the game... How am I trying to say this? Naughty Dog didn't build... A video game. They didn't build levels. They built a system of interactions, of, of systems that interact with each other, uh, given various inputs, and they, they show you different things. And then they crafted a world around those systems. So everything you do feels really good. When you're like, okay, I'm going to make a noise here, which will drive these guys over there, which will activate a bomb here. But then I'm going to throw a Molotov over here and catch these guys that are now running to help them. You can make mm-hmm. shit like this work, and it's beautiful when it does. I I love the the game. I love the story. Um, I don't think it's the best game of all time. I do think it's really good, and I think if you have the means, you should go through it. Would I buy a PS3 to play this game? No. If I have a PS3, is it a must buy? Absolutely. So yeah. there was an extra I, element to this game that you won't get now. I don't know if Adam explored this at all. I bought mm-hmm. a PS3 for this game when it came out. I bought it a week before, fucked around with Resistance because I had played that before and knew I liked it. And then when this came out, I got it. Its online multiplayer was really good. It was different. It was crafting based like you do in the game, but for different weapons and stuff. It was just such a good, fun multiplayer with this big meta where when you would win, you're, you're, um, you're essentially working for a colony. You're in a colony. When you win a fight, you'll bring back resources and medicine to treat sick and feed. And your colony will grow with the better you do. If you lose, you don't necessarily lose population. You don't shrink. But people might start getting sick because you're not getting the uh, medicine. Or people might start getting hungry. And it shows in your population how healthy they're staying and whatnot. So the more you win, you'll start to um, actually grow and get different abilities for inside the colony. So you're playing a game outside of your games. Nice. Yeah, I never even touched multiplayer. I didn't either. It's re- it was really fun. Nice. Oh, yeah, Tom, I, did, I liked it. How much did you read into like the, the optional um, like world-building pick up notes and stuff in the game uh a decent heavy on that yeah yeah i read everything i came across one of my favorite parts about this is it's kind of a zombie game but it's not the traditional zombie it's it's a fungus it's not a virus and you can see on the enemies that the fungus like grows and kind of overtakes them and then some of them are more overgrown than others and it's actually based on a cordyceps fungi that's a real thing it happens to ants and this fun guy like takes over this dead ant and kind of like reanimates it almost in a way. It's so that was that was their inspiration up. for that. Yeah, <laughs> I thought they that was some cool. YouTube videos. It was on, a cool twist on that. On the fungus ants, they literally become zombies to this fungus parasite thing. It is fucked up. <laughs> and then in the story of this, what it's it's essentially weaponized, and then the group that weaponized it realized they fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. 
It's it's interesting. One thing I you get a little bit of in the beginning, and I understand why they didn't do it later because it's really hard to fit this in with their pacing. I wanted to see more cities. I wanted to see more quarantine zones. You get the little bit at the beginning, uh, you know, with with people. Uh, but then you don't really see too many normal people that aren't trying to kill you afterwards. You get uh, and without too- without getting into spoilers. I understand why they didn't do that, but I wish I would have seen more of the average day to day lives of normal people. I kind of liked it. You saw two. You saw three looks really. Where you start, you saw an abandoned settlement thingy, kind of where you like how you started, and you see how everything went to shit there because people weren't being fed, right? And then you get the um the big city but i'm not gonna go into that because spoiler stuff but yeah yeah (laughs) yeah so you know if uh the the last word on the last of us i think you should buy it definitely if you've got you know the ability to get the hd re-release absolutely go get that totally worth it um i enjoyed it uh other than that uh i did play overcooked which we loved uh and spelunky which i'm getting more into and nice. I think I'm I'm starting to hit my stride of okay. I know what to do now. I know what not to do. I know how things are behaving. I'm starting to you know build this mental model of this, this is the world of Spelunky and this is how things work, which you know is is core to any roguelike. You have to become better. The game's not going to get any easier. You have to be better. Get good, son. <laughs> get, get good. Get good, um, good scrub. Oh, and I I am I'm scrubbing hard with Spelunky. <laughs> Uh, I have been going through the past two days um, trying to marathon another game, The Witcher, and holy shit, this is so much better than I thought. Yeah. So um, I tried uh, a couple months ago to play through The Witcher 2, and unlike, you know, your Metroid games where they say, oh, you're the super elite bounty hunter, everyone respects you, you've got this insane arsenal, oh no, you got hit by lightning and you lose everything, you're back to square one, do it all over again. The Witcher does not operate that way. I get into The Witcher 2 and they're like, hey, uh, here's your potion menu, here's your alchemy stuff, here's your herbalism, here's, you know, all your spells, here's all your combat, Uh, go. Uh, Here's a bunch of dudes, just go kill them. (laughs) Have fun, good luck. And the game... If you really wanted to read into those systems, you could make it happen without going into the first game at all. You can play it that way, but it is kind of a slog to do. So I figured, ah, eh, I'll go through the first game. It's not that bad. Um, and I was reading combat is absolutely atrocious. And it's I'll admit, it's not great. It's not even good. It's kind of barely passable. But this is one of the most involved RPGs I've played in a long time. Yeah. I'm talking to everyone. I am reading all of the little stupid scraps of paper and notes, and you get you know entries in your journal, and I'm pouring over those. There's an immense amount of world building. It is absolutely fantastic, and I think I'm about 10 to 12 hours into the game so far. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I tried to play through The Witcher 2. Um, how, how much time did I put into that? Like 20 hours, maybe? But, oh, that was just too much. <laughs> yeah, It's too much to keep track of, too much to do. I'm not an RPG guy anyway. And I ended up losing my attention span, which was my fault because the game was actually really good. It, it's just not something I can put it is not focus light. into. Yeah, This is not a light, yeah. you know, run to, from point to point RPG. I mean, it there was, are systems upon systems upon yeah. systems. It was nice to see that fantasy kind of environment, but it was like really dark and gritty and bad language and nudity and excessive violence. And it was kind of nice to see a little more of a adult version of that. More of what you think it would actually be versus yeah. what you kind of yeah. see. Yeah, it's very yeah. dark. There's um, there's heavy elements of, uh, of racism in, in The Witcher um, where, you know, people are hating on people who aren't like them for various reasons, you know, founded or unfounded. Uh, And in the story, you'll see, at least right now where I'm at, there's a whole lot of gray. There's never any black and white. And I didn't realize this, but you do make choices in The Witcher that do affect the game later on, but it it doesn't do the stupid Bioshock or um, whatever that stupid lightning game is that was on the PS3. 
I, I don't know. There's the, some superhero game, Infamous, um, oh, where you, know, yeah. you can be the, the blue <laughs> light guy and you can be yeah. the red, black, dark guy. And, yeah. and you've got to make these really annoying, arbitrary choices of, well, do I slaughter the innocents or do I save the world? It's yeah. not like that. It's, uh, you know, hey, dude, there's these two things. Uh, you can either help these guys kill this thing over here, which is really important, or you can help this dude with this thing, which is also really important because this other person's going to die. Like, yeah. ah, I'll go over here because you guys really got this. And that affected me later on. I was like, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't yeah. get like a, you know, red on one side of my screen and right, blue on yeah. the other side of the right. screen. It's There's a lot really of tough choices. Done. And yeah. I've heard a lot of those choices, like, you don't know that that's an important choice even necessarily until like later in the game, it affects something like way yeah. down the line. So that's kind of cool too. And I've also it's, heard it's a very realistic way to do it. I've heard yeah. some of them are really bad situations to be in too. Like, Oh, do you want to help this pedophile or you want to help these murderers? Yeah. <laughs> Where it's I'm like, sure. where, which one do you really want to put your hat on? Yeah. Yeah. And he plays as this badass monster hunter character. But from what I've heard, isn't he kind of looked down upon in the game? by like most people like kind of a lowly you're, you're not you're playing this, this super prestigious oh our savior kind of character so the, the the best way i heard it put was uh in if have you guys seen smosh's honest trailers where they take you know movies or games and make honest trailers about them they're fucking hilarious uh they basically said you know the witcher is the monster hunter game that should have always been made uh, what yeah. a witcher is, is he's a professional monster hunter. If you're like, hey, I've got a bunch of zombies in my backyard. I'll give you a hundred bucks if you kill them. You would pay a witcher to do that. That's their job. They run around and they kill horrible things. Um, and that's a lot of your job. Is some people are like, hey, I need these things for a spell. Uh, hey, you know, my garden is infested with live plants that are tearing men limb from limb uh can you kill those <laughs> there are like, plants yeah. for zombies going on in my garden right now i don't want this game <laughs> to finish could you please take care of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're like uh yeah i think i got some like uh extra large roundup in my bag i'll uh i'll get right on that but uh the world is very interesting so far i'm sure i'll have more to talk about later um but I'm loving the mini games and i am kicking so much ass at dice poker it is not even funny <laughs> That's the Not kind of shit I would do in Fable. Yeah, I've heard the games get better as they go. Like, 2 was better than 1, 3 was better than 2. 3, apparently, was incredible. Like, even for people that didn't play the first two games, it was still good. So yeah, I've I, always been tempted to pick up The Witcher 3, but I just can't. I'm just so worried I'll pick it up, and then I'll just put 10 to 20 hours into it and never touch it again. Yeah, I heard it's yeah. a time suck. A big yeah. time suck. Which I'm sure if you just mainline the main quest, and you can mitigate that a little bit i've heard it's still a 30 hour main quest yeah i i know i'm gonna get some bless some blasphemy points for this and don't get me wrong i do love this game but i actually give a shit about this world and this characters unlike every elder scrolls game i've ever played yes <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Right? Am I the only one? Like, I love the games. They're amazing games. Skyrim was fantastic. And, you know, there's a reason it's being re-released five years after it came out. But I honestly didn't give a shit about what I was doing. Yeah, okay, that's I, true. I got cut <laughs> down the other day because I was like, you know what? I, I've i dabbled when Adam had Skyrim, but I'm like, I've never really played it. Like, how have you never played it? It's so amazing. Like, because I played Morrowind. I played Oblivion. I played Elder Scrolls. I love Elder Scrolls, but I know what it is. I don't need to go play Skyrim right now. Hey, Elder Scrolls, and I, I don't want to say this because it's really a slap in the face to the entire series. But the Elder Scrolls feels to me like a quintessential generic. You know, it's a white box with black bold letters that say "fantasy RPG game" or "fantasy action RPG" on the box. And I, I know what I'm getting when I go in there. The Witcher doesn't feel like that. It feels legit. Yeah. Yeah, but um, you, that sounded like blasphemy on the Elder Scrolls. I want to throw this in there. <laughs> yes, they are like what you think of. I agree. But my God, they're fucking good at it. Yeah, They are. They really are. Especially the flying horses and the old woman sinking into the ground trying to give me a quest, and then she just sinks into the abyss. So Morrowind <laughs> was my first <laughs> ever dabble. Bethesda with um kind of toying with i and i files on computer games so um me and my buddy were fucking around we're like you know what i just wanted to be able to like pretty much just jump how high can you jump and we found the variable for jumping height 
we was able to set it to where when we jumped, we ended up flying and we got locked in the sky. And like we started doing shit like that with the speed and stuff like that. It's like, ah, so a lot of these variables they have set here so people can adjust them. This is kind of fun. So that's how I found out about messing with ionized and stuff. Good times. <laughs> yeah, that, that's been my gaming week is Last of Us, Overcooked, Spelunky, and The Witcher, which I will go back to after this podcast. What about you, Eric? I know you've been traveling a lot, so I'm sure you yeah. haven't had a whole lot of time. But So I've been jumping on my roommate's computer back in uh, the old Columbus area. And I uh, got some Rocket League in there. Can't, I can't go more than like a week without Rocket League. I start to shake. It just, it's just not natural. <laughs> so, um, do you have that, that sweet black tar Rocket League? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sweet black tar I, Rocket League. I know League. all about that. I know all about that. Brought in from Psionics Labs, I get. No, I tried. Never mind. Fucked it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, definitely Rocket League. Um, overcooked. Already went there. Not touching it again. Um, Enter the Gungeon. I've got my first oh, hand on the experience, finally play that? but co-opt with oh, two yeah? people. And I will huh. say, that is fun. However, it is also one of the hardest roguelites I think I've played. That is a hard game. Yes, it is. It's, it's very hard. That is so hard. I went in there because the, the guy I played with, he's had it for a while. And I'm like, I know Isaac. I'm going to jump in this and hell, I'll make this guy look bad. And he owns the game. <laughs> Fuck man, I looked bad. I looked yeah. real bad. But it's so how do they do that if it's a roguelike and co-op? Like, do you get one life and you go away forever and your buddy has to keep playing without you? They have to finish the floor. They finish the floor, you resurrect. Okay. Okay, that's a nice way to do it. And there is resurrection items. So I mean I was wondering if there's like a Donkey Kong barrel that he hits and you pop out of it. You're like, ah No, you have to get to a uh point. I don't know if it's just clearing the floor. It happened once for us. I don't know if it was clearing the floor or if it was a certain point we got. But yeah, so I came back and it was, it's a good game. It's a good co-op. I was putting it as one of my favorite co-ops I've played in a while until we did Overcook. But yeah. <laughs> and then um, speaking of co-ops, this wasn't a, well, multiplayer, I should say. I also just picked up Gang Beast. It's early access. Um, This is not in a, uh, go buy it statement, but isn't that double fine? Um, I don't know. I'll check that in a second. But it's the ragdoll game where everyone's like these big blob ragdolls, and you're fighting. It's this big. You're trying to kill everyone else and be the last man standing. But it's just hilarious the way they interact with each other. Like, you'll be on these, um, like, the window washing things, that you, like the big floors that they go up, and there'll be two of them. And all of a sudden, you'll start fighting, and you'll start to destroy one. And, like, one will start to fall, and you'll see someone just hanging. And then they'll, like, grum up and grab someone's leg. And then the guy's leg, they'll start kicking him in the face and knock him out, and they'll just drop and fall. And, like, there's actually this sense of you grab someone and start getting ready to throw them. You can alternate whichever or choose which arm you swing to punch with. So you, if they've got your left arm, you can actually punch them with the right and then just mm. grab them and throw them off. Nice. So, so looking at videos of this game, because I've seen a ton of videos and it looks hilarious and fun. The first thing I thought is, oh my God, that's going to be such a bitch to control. It is, <laughs> okay. So it is clunky. This game is clunky. Um, it's part of its beauty, but it's clunky. Um, we were playing on some Jap uh, Japan servers because we had a party of four of us and we couldn't fit in a uh, game. So we had to go to Japan servers where there was an opening for four. This guy had the controls down like nothing I'd have ever seen before. <laughs> huh. Like he was able to um, take uh, one of my friends that was knocked unconscious, grab him by the arm, hang him over the edge with one arm and punch him in the head repeatedly with the other stopped and his character was right in front of the camera just stops for a second as soon as scott looks like he's getting ready to come back to knocks him back out punches him two more times and drops him <laughs> <laughs> i mean this what guy had hell? such control it was hilarious that game looks like a lot of fun um it's not if you're by yourself and you don't play games with friends don't pick this up this is oh, a I'm sure. game yeah. that you want to play with people that you know and it's just going to be hilarious the way it acts 
I'm a super competitive guy and I can't get that competitive at this game. Yeah. It's just too silly and goofy and clumsy. It seems like a good have a couple of drinks with friends and play. Oh and God, if you were drunk playing this, <laughs> it, you would never stop. It'd be so good. Yeah. But that's pretty much all I've done. Didn't get a whole lot of time. Nice. Next week, hoping to get back on the horse. So we, we uh, have been talking and this is the last podcast of 2016 for us. Uh, the last one ever of all time. There are no more podcasts after this for anyone. This year. Until 2017. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> the games are coming out in 2017 that we are looking forward to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and throw it to Adam to kick this list off. Yeah. So I'm going to throw in something that I don't think you guys have heard of. But Routine I'm is a... Uh, I mean... When I describe this to you, you're going to go, oh, another one? Okay. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's a first-person horror exploration survival space game. Is there crafting? So, I'm looking at my checklist here. Is there crafting? Oh, I don't know if there's crafting. Oh, Is there a yeah, mining element? <laughs> I'm not sure. I, don't, I haven't seen a whole lot, but what I have seen, it's interesting because it looks very scary. But um, the, I think the main monsters are robots. So you, you go to this abandoned moon base and there are robots there, and some sort of uh, survival horror experience looks really cool. And actually, the sound design was done by Mick Gordon, oh, who is really? the man who did the Doom soundtrack. Ooh. Huh. So I'm excited to to see what he did with this one. And I'm sure it's nothing like Doom, but I'd, I'm still really curious to see. Another plug for you know the Doom soundtrack, yeah, yeah, <laughs> development. The game looks slash really making of. Yeah, the game looks really good, and I think it's supposed to come out like early next year. Hmm. I'm, I'll, so that's something I'm looking forward to. I'll get I love in. survival horror games, and I'm a, a sucker for space. I'm Nothing is scarier than space in general. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a sucker for survival horror. Therefore, I throw my money away nine out of ten times. Because most yeah. of these games come in early access and are bad. Don't get me wrong. I hope this yeah. one pulls it off because I'm. I want a good polished one. I want yeah. the promise and it's kind of, of Daisy. Uh, yeah, and it's kind of like a retro '80s sci-fi space theme too. So you got me there. There's some CRT screens and whatnot. So nice. I'm looking forward to this. I'm a I fan think, of this. I think it's going to be cool. Um, I'll send you guys the alpha gameplay trailer so you can check it out. So we, maybe we can, um, we'll shoot that out on our Twitter so people can see that too, because we're sure not everyone's familiar with this title. Yeah. So Eric, what are you excited for? Give us one. We'll, so, go, in a, we'll go in circles. I know that Tom's not a console guy. I'm sure he'll get one for this, because I know I will have this console before this releases. Zelda Breath of the Wild. Nice. Um, it is finally the marriage of Zelda and open world. Zelda was one of the first games to implement sort pseudo open world kind of flows with like Ocarina and Time, be able to go to whatever temples you want. But finally, yeah. we are getting Elder Scrolls meets Zelda. <laughs> and it's going it looks to, like an interesting combination. It's going it well, I shouldn't say it's going to be. It seems yeah. as if it is going yeah. to be so good. Do we have a release date for that yet? Um not yet. But it is it is a launch title, though, right? For the Switch? No, that has not been in no, the not. either. Um, okay. So, supposedly it was being developed for the Wii U, but, I mean, you have to go back. This is kind of mimicking Twilight Princess, where Twilight yeah. Princess was released as a launch title for the Wii, but was also released on the GameCube. So, I mean, we are, okay. we're in potential waters of that. Um, when the Switch releases, I would, it would be hard for this game not to be out within a month if it's not a launch title. Yeah. As much as they've been showcasing it. Yeah. Still don't know how I feel about this. I know I want it, but I still don't know how I feel about it. On one hand, it's an open world game. On the other hand, it's a Zelda open world game, which is something, you know, personally I've begged for forever, but yeah. Ugh. The one thing I keep in mind, it's something new. Nintendo's trying something different. I don't like it, but <laughs> Nintendo has one thing going for them. Like or hate the games they make. They are always well polished and work perfectly. Yes, they do. And you give me a perfectly working open world game. I'm looking forward. That should be good. Yeah. 
What about you, hey, Tom? Hey, it's, it's an open world game not made by Bethesda, so there's already <laughs> points in its favor. All right. There's already going to be uh, 100 I, less bugs. I am looking forward to... Um, and I... I'm looking forward to it, and I'm dreading what happens to it. I'm looking forward to Mass Effect Andromeda, uh, because oh, yeah. I love Mass Effect. 120 hours. Uh, this, like, uh, when I talk about deep emotional ties to games, and, and we discussed The Walking Dead and how much that affected me, you know, Mass Effect was head and shoulders above that, because you spend all of your time getting to know these people, and then get them yanked away from you in a horrible, daring suicide mission where everyone's sobbing at the end because you just lost half of your best friends. It's, <laughs> it's a space opera RPG to end all space opera RPGs. And I hope that they can make lightning strike twice. Yeah. Um, they showed us literally everything I do not care about of, in the game. They showed us yeah. all the gunplay and I just don't give a shit. The, one of the first <laughs> best trailers for the original mass effect was you talking to some guy in a shitty bar. And that was the best trailer for Mass Effect ever because it showed dialogue. It had some world building in there. It showed how you could either piss this guy off or be his best friend. And that's what a Mass Effect game is. It should be an RPG first and foremost. I hope they stick with that, but we'll see. It's, this is EA. It could go either way pretty easily. This yeah. is exciting because it's a brand new start for them, though. This, yeah. they've, they've done this in such a way that it's tastefully detached from the first saga. There, you might get some fan play where they you hear some passive talking about some lore from the first three or first two, really. The third one they have nothing, no knowledge about. But actual game should be completely detached, and that's going to be good. I'm wondering if they have an issue like you know where a bunch of '80s action and horror movies had, where they you know they've upped the ante because first you're, you know, saving a space station and then you're, you're saving pieces of the galaxy and then you're saving the universe, right? When, when the, the Reapers come in at mass effect three. Um, but how do you go on from there? Right. Do you put, you know, Jason in space? No, cause that's oh, shitty. I mean, they tried it, but what are you going to do? Right. How, how do you make mass effect Andromeda Great again. hype up that much right because they've already saved the universe right you've already had this giant upheaval and fall and crescendo and it was a perfect story arc how do you recreate that right do you you can't start above saving the universe there's nothing left well correct me if i'm wrong they didn't save the universe they saved the galaxy that's true that's true and this is the beauty of this this was sent out before the events of mass effect 3 so yeah. they think they're re- they're just setting shop up in a new galaxy. Let's start. Just, from I'm fresh. hoping I'm hoping they don't you know put you know Nazis on a moon base and hope that it all works out. But we'll see. Do you got anything so, else, uh, Adam? Yes, I do. Um, I'm gonna stay on the survival horror train because it's what I can do and that's what I want to do. <laughs> I'm kind of excited. I'm actually really excited for uh, Resident Evil Seven huge departure from the series um i haven't really paid attention to or cared about a resident evil game since i was like what 10 years old playing resident evil 2 for the first time (laughs) i just haven't been that interested in them but this seems like a huge departure it from what i played of the demo if it's in that same vein at least at least somewhat i think it's going to be a cool a cool game I like IPs that are well established that gamble a little bit. Yeah. I like a change of well, pace. And I know a lot of Resident Evil fans might be so mad when it comes out. I don't but know. Those people need to just take it as the whatever game it ends up being. Well, don't hang I mean, on the Resident Evil title so much and just see if it's a good game. Resident Evil to me, after four has always meant, you know, decent horror games. Like you know, five and six were dog shit, but with four, it was completely different from any other game in the series that came before yeah. it. Resident Evil, the team behind that, they are not strangers to just chucking it all out the window and saying, "All right, what's the next big thing?" Right. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seven. Yeah, I am looking forward to one other game. It is yet another open world game, and it's by the masters oh, of open yes. world. Fuck you, Bethesda fans. Bethesda is not the best. Rockstar has that title through and through. 
They were going just back. a bunch of rock stars working over there. Yeah, they were going back to the Wild <laughs> West one more fucking time because we all want to ride goddamn horses and not drive Lamborghinis. <laughs> Red, Red Dead Redemption Two. Hell yeah, brother! No, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so pumped for that. That first game was <laughs> so fucking good, so good. I remember just aimlessly riding around, pop off the horse, shoot a bird get its feathers get back on the horse see a cougar shoot it skin it sell it jump back on the horse and i just did that hey mr hunter i didn't do that's, shit that's with who the you are story. As a, that's who you are as a person that's not the game no but the game suits that <laughs> awesome it's it's exactly what happens in grand theft auto where you know i would run around for no reason mm-hmm. and just i would i would pick a stupid mission okay i'm gonna shoot out all the tires and all the blue cars i see yeah. Or I would pick one guy and he would be my assassination mission. So I'd shoot the corner of his car and he'd drive off crazy and I'd give him like a three second head start. So, all right, that's my target. I've got him now. <laughs> just stupid little shit like that. But now you're a cowboy. You know, that just makes it better. Oh, yeah, for sure. You have any other stuff? Well, I, I do. I do. And I don't know if this is going to come out in 2017. I. Don't know if I want it to come out in 2017 because usually the longer a game cooks, the better it is. I want Death Stranding and I want it like yesterday. Yeah. I have no idea what it's about. I have no idea what kind of game it is. I have no idea what anything is in Death Stranding except it's got a really rocking song. Uh, and there's some creepy baby thing in Del Toro and Kojima and like some skeletons or something. So, yeah, if you like skeletons or something, cool soundtracks, Kojima, and, like, weird, freaky baby monster things, uh, yeah, you're going to want to pick up Death Stranding immediately. Or uh, or you can go to Walmart, where supposedly some yes. people have been able to play the game because there is reviews saying how addictive this <laughs> game is. And yeah, this, my like friend, yeah. is why you have to be careful about reading reviews. Who are you? What do you know? Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is actually Kojima. Kojima yeah. is writing reviews. I and, can't believe that's for up for pre order already. That's so silly. And supposedly yeah. Walmart doesn't realize what's going on. And if I want it by January second, I can rush order a checkout. Oh yeah, there you go. Can yeah, someone so. please tell the game devs to have that ready for me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just no, but- I'll give Kojima a call. <laughs> we will get that box up right for you. Yeah, I'm so excited to see what this game is, though. I just want to know more about it, even if it doesn't come out for a long time. I want another trailer or something. I want to see gameplay more than I have no reason. I just want to see the gameplay. I have no reason to be excited. I have no idea what this is going to be about. There's plenty of reason to be excited. (laughs) Kojima is making something. I have to buy it. (laughs) See, what we need to be worried about is Kojima's always been put within bounds. When he's completely taken out of the straitjacket, this could be the most (laughs) fucked up piece of horse shit we ever see. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, he was in a straitjacket and he made a story as convoluted as the Metal Gear Solid storyline. What the fuck? While in a straitjacket. At the same time, don't let the hype get too high, otherwise you won't. No matter how good it is, you won't be impressed. I I just, I can't (laughs) imagine any story less than this makes no complete sense and there's going to be like quadruple crosses mixed with quintuple crosses mixed with <laughs> this actually didn't happen it was a dream the whole time and then like in like Shyamalan's gonna like peek out of the corner and be like ah that was great right guys <laughs> actually it was going on that dream was just in addition to <laughs> and then it's inception and I, I don't even know <laughs> the people wake so, up and see people in their ear and yeah the uh the rest of the list uh I think are pretty minor um Anything you guys are looking forward to in, in particular? Uh, uh, I know I'm looking forward I'm looking to the forward. Switch. Oh, yeah, of course. Everyone's I want to see more Switch. about that. Um, I, I'm curious about Prey. I want to see what that ends up being. Um, without ties to the first, first game. So. Um, the South, then, you know, South Parks. They are... Um, the game so far have been great. The Tower Defense, Stick of Truth. I mean, give them one more shot. Hell yeah. Those guys know how to do humor. Yes, they do. <laughs> Uh, Outlast 2 I'm looking forward to because the the demo's out actually if you want to play it um, seems to be somewhat of a departure from the last one uh, the last one got a little weird at the end with the twist this one seems to be a different sort of theme which I'm looking forward to so that could be cool the bandicoot's back baby oh. bring back crash 
I mean, not that anyone really cared. I know that there were like some diehard Crash fans out there, but I was when I was a kid. But any enjoyment out of this will be nostalgia at this point. I I played Crash Bandicoot after my love affair with Mario sixty four, so I just wasn't yeah. impressed. It seemed like okay, here's a platformer on rails. It's not bad. I didn't yeah. think it was great. Actually, this other release is notable, at least for me and Eric. Uh, the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus DLC releases on the third, which is only a couple days away. Yeah, and I so, I, I feel bad because I we talked about that a lot the last podcast too, or the last couple. Yeah, and I brushed that under a rug mainly because to me it's a DLC, which I'm still very excited for. It's oh, yeah. just I it in the mental note of like big checklist. That's more of a I'll realize oh shit it's the fifth I haven't got this yet. Yeah, and then I'll rush home get it, and that'll be that. Oh yeah, definitely looking forward to that. So, I think that pretty much wraps it up for us. Um, to end on, since this is the last podcast of the year, we're coming up on a new year. Do you guys have any New Year's resolutions? Are you re- resolution people? Do you do that? I am not resolution people, but I will make New Year's <laughs> resolutions for the 72 Bin Connector podcast. Yeah. I, I resolve. Yourself. I resolve to be 2.5k MMR in Dota 2 by the end of the year. I will gain 1,000 MMR. Damn. Yeah, I, Which actually, it, it's an, a big accomplishment because like, I'm pub trash right now. Yeah, <laughs> pub trash. That's cool, though. I tend to not do resolutions. I tend to do like monthly goal kind of things. Yeah. But I want... I'm out in Washington now. I want to fish at least 10 different bodies of water this next year. Ooh, that's a good one. Because I want to get some damn salmon, some damn squid, some damn trout, some damn bass. Oh, yeah. Those are memories. Give me them fish. Memories. Memories. My resolution is to make this podcast awesome and for it to take off. Oh, shit. Um, I don't really have any specific resolutions. Just improve my life in every way I can. That's always important. Make dank memes and dank money. Play more games. Different games. Different games. All that good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I think you think I've got a bonus. Explore the gaming world. I think I've got a bonus resolution. Look at more rad gaming facts from digunogaming.com. Yeah. This one comes from digunogaming.com slash page slash 128. Uh, the Chain Chomp enemies in Mario were actually inspired by a dog chained to a post that belonged to a neighbor of Shigeru Miyamoto. That dog scared the shit out of him. And that's why he made the chain chomps fucking terrifying. Oh, that's yeah. kind of cool. I can see it. Yeah, <laughs> right? Right? Because those things were always fucking obnoxious. And actually, in yes. Mario 64, they barked. Yes, they did. Oh, yeah. Yes, they I did. never thought about that. Yep. Huh. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you, <laughs> DidYouKnowGaming.com, which is also a fantastic YouTube channel that you should subscribe to. Plug. So I think, I that think that's about it, here, doesn't it? Yep, I think it that's, does. that's about all we have. So, if you guys would like to, um, you know, tell us what you think, how we did, we have a few ways you can get at us. You can uh, tweet at us at, at seventy two PC Podcast. You can send us an email at fanmail at seventy two pinconnector dot com. If you want to go see some of our old shows or some content that we will be getting up about game reviews and whatnot and all sorts of other fun stuff we do, you can find us at YouTube. Spoiler cast. Spoiler cast. (laughs) You can uh, find us at 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. Um, If you would like to watch us live Friday nights at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, you can find us at Twitch at Twitch slash That was awesome. Twitch.tv slash 72 Pin Connector. My tongue gets tired. Or you can go over to our website at 72 pinconnectorcom and see what we've been up to. So, with that being that, I think that's all we got for this week. So, until next week, game on. Bye, everybody. Yes.